Hi, I'm Mark from Trading the Market. Yes, this is another video about standard deviation and I'm only making it because you asked for it. It seems some of you are still struggling with it, what it is and how to use it. I struggle to find a balance with videos on how simple to make explaining them, but I never want to come across as I'm talking down to you or talking to you like you're an idiot. When others call traders stupid for not knowing something, I have to disagree with this. Stupid is not willing to learn something. You're not stupid because you haven't learned it yet. So what is standard deviation? Let's start off with the basics of standard deviation, or SD for short. You might remember this from school, but if not, don't worry, I'll explain it step by step. Standard deviation is a measure that shows us how much individual numbers differ from the average in a set of data. In other words, it tells us how spread out or clustered together numbers are around the average. Imagine you have a group of numbers, like the numbers of goals scored in several football matches, say 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. If we add these numbers up and divide by the number of matches, we get an average, which is the centre or the middle value of the group. But here's the important part, just knowing the average doesn't tell us the whole story. Are most games close to that average, or are some games way above or below it? That's where standard deviation comes in. SD tells us how far each number is from that average. If most of the numbers are close to the average, we get a low standard deviation, meaning scores are pretty consistent and there's not much variation. But if some games have lots of goals and others have few, the standard deviation will be high, meaning that there's a wide spread around the average. Let's make this easier with an example. Say we're looking at goals scored in two different leagues. In League A, the teams typically score around two to three goals per game, with only a few games where scores stray far from that. League B though is all over the place. Some games end up nil-nil and other games end up 5-4 or even higher. Here's the difference. League A has a low standard deviation. Most games are close to that average goal count, so it's more predictable. League B, on the other hand, has a high standard deviation because the scores vary a lot more. That makes League B less predictable because games could end up with hardly any goals or be a high scoring affair. Standard deviation gives us a powerful way to measure consistency. If you're trying to understand the team's scoring behavior, just looking at the average goals doesn't always give you the full picture. The SD lets us know if we're likely to see a similar score from the game or games to come, or if things are unpredictable. This can be useful for traders, analysts and gamblers in sports markets where we want to gauge the volatility of teams. So remember, standard deviation is a measure of spread. Low SD means things are close to the average. High SD means things are a wide range. And when it comes to analyzing goals in football, it's a great tool to see if teams are reliably consistent or more unpredictable. Now we understand what standard deviation is, let's take a look at how it's used all around the world. You might be surprised, standard deviation isn't just a tool for analyzing football stats. In fact, it's a universal concept applied across many fields from finance to education, quality control, and even health sciences. It helps us make sense of data in ways that are crucial for decision-making in a variety of industries. One of the most common places where standard deviation plays a big role is in finance, especially when it comes to the stock market. Investors and analysts use standard deviation to measure the volatility or risk of a stock or investment portfolio. Here's how it works. If a stock price goes up and down wildly from one day to the next, it's a high standard deviation, indicating risky investment. In contrast, if a stock price remains relatively stable, it has a low standard deviation, making it a safer, more predictable choice. Think of it this way, if you invest in a big established company like Coca-Cola, which has relatively stable earnings, the standard deviation of its stock price will be low because it doesn't fluctuate as much. But if you invest in a newer tech company like Tesla with prices swinging up and down, the standard deviation will be higher, showing greater risk. Investors will use this information to decide how much risk they're comfortable with in their portfolios. Another big area where standard deviation is crucial is in manufacturing, especially when it comes to quality control. Companies need to make sure that products they create meet specific standards, whether it's size, weight or performance of an item. By using standard deviation, they can monitor how consistent their process is. A low standard deviation means their products are all coming out nearly the same quality, which is what they want. But if the standard deviation is high, it means there are inconsistencies and something might be wrong in the production process. Imagine a car factory producing tires. Each tire needs to have the same diameter for safety and performance reasons. 
During production, they measure a sample of the tyres and calculate the standard deviation. If it's low, it means the tyres are consistently the right size, but if the SD is high, they know they need to check the machines or materials and the quality might be slipping. This way, standard deviation helps maintain the quality and safety of products that people rely on. Standard deviation isn't just a math term, it's a practical tool used around the world to make better decisions in many areas, whether it's helping investors assess risk, ensuring quality in manufacturing or supporting students in the classroom. Standard deviation plays a crucial role in giving us insight about consistency, variability and predictability. Now that we know how SD is used globally, let's see how we can apply it specifically to football and goal statistics. This is where it gets really interesting because standard deviation can give us a unique angle on analysing team's performance and match unpredictability. Let's bring it back to football and let's explore how standard deviation can help us understand and analyse goals scored by a team. In football, goals are what it's all about. They're the moment that decides the game, but when we look at a team's performance over a season or a tournament, there's more to understanding the scoring ability than just knowing the average number of goals. Let's say we're looking at a team. Team A and they've played 10 games so far. Over those games, they've scored different number of goals, sometimes one goal, sometimes three goals, sometimes none. If we add up all those goals together and divide it by 10, we get the average goals per game. For this example, let's say it's two goals per game. Now, just knowing the average tells us a little, but it doesn't give us the whole story. Imagine two different teams, both with an average of two goals per game. Does that mean that both teams are equally likely to score two goals in the next game? Not necessarily. That's because one team might consistently score close to the average, while the other team's scores might vary wildly from game to game. This is where standard deviation comes in. By calculating the SD of the goals, we can get an idea of how much a team's scoring trends tends to vary around the average. If team A has a low standard deviation, it means they're scoring close to two goals in most games. They're predictable. But if they have a high standard deviation, it means the scores are all over the place. Some games they score four, some games they score none. Let's look at two teams with the same average, but different standard deviations. Imagine team A has an average of two goals per game with a low SD, say 0.5. This means they're usually scoring between 1.5 and 2.5 goals in most games, very close to the average. They're steady and reliable, so if you're analysing a future game, you might expect them to stick to that range. Now take Team B, also with an average of 2 goals per game, but with a high standard deviation, say 1.5, this team's goal scoring pattern is very different. They might score 0 goals one week, then explode with a 4 or 5 the next, they're less predictable and a high standard deviation tells us we might see a big difference in their scoring from game to game. So why does this matter? Knowing a team standard deviation helps us predict how predictable or unpredictable the games are likely to be. If a team has a low SD, they're more likely to score close to the average in each game. If they have a high SD, it's anyone's guess. Their performance could vary wildly, meaning more potential for surprises and upsets. Let's look at a real example for a fixture that hasn't been played yet. Wolves vs Southampton. This game kicks off on the 8th of the 11th, 2024 at 3pm in the UK and is a Premier League game. We're going to be looking on the form tab on Sports IQ for the SD for this fixture. The average goals for Wolves is 1.4, so in all games so far this season they have scored a mean average of 1.4 goals and they have a standard deviation of 0.8. This tells me that the average goals are 1.4 and if we take away the deviation it's 0.8. If we add on the deviation, it's 2.2. So Wolves score between 0.8 and 2.2 goals. Let's do the same for Southampton. Average goals is 0.7. They have a deviation of 0.64. This gives them a mean average of 0.7 and minus the SD would be 0.06 goals, which is no goals. And adding the deviation will give them 1.34 goals. This tells us we expect Wolves to score between pretty much 1 and 2 goals and Southampton score between none and 1. Let's look at the numbers if we counted for only home and away goals. Wolves at home score an average of 1.4 goals. Take away the home deviation of 0.49, this gives us 0.91 goals and adding the deviation will give us 1.89 goals. Southampton have an away goal mean average of 0.6 and if we take away the standard deviation of the away games then we have a minimum of 0.11 goals and if we add the deviation we have 1.09 goals. Now I'd never profile a match on SD alone but it's a good indicator. 
I will mention that Wolves have achieved in the last eight games on average a points per game of 0.38 points and Southampton have achieved a points per game of 0.5 points. Southampton have been performing better but then when we look at the team's points per game they've been playing against we can see that Wolves have been facing teams with an average of 1.63 points per game and Southampton have faced teams with an average of 1.31 points per game. That is a significant difference. On this game alone, I would personally be touching scores of 2-1, 2-0 and 1-0. This would be a touching trade and not a straight bet. So don't be running off to your mates at Bet365 just blind back in these scores. I see this game having under three and a half goals. At the time of recording this video, the odds are 1.54. This means the market thinks the probability of that happening is 64.9%. This would also be a trade with an entry and exit, not a bet. Standard deviation is just a number to tell you how stable something is. In this case, we use the standard deviation for goals. We could use it for almost any number. If we looked at Wolves points per game of 0.38, they have a standard deviation of 0.458 for that and Southampton have 0.5 points per game with a standard deviation of 0.956 showing that Wolves is a much more stable team with regards to points per game which is a feat in itself as Wolves in the last 10 games have played the top 7 teams in the league while Southampton have played only 3 of them. For all those who have struggled with SD, I hope this makes it simple and for those who already could use it, I hope the SD on the points per game gave you something to think about. Last thing is to say, please check that you are subscribed to the channel as it makes a difference and allows us to keep doing this for free. It also helps us know which videos you want to see more of by the ones you click subscribe on. There is nothing left to say except I've been Mark, this has been the simplified standard deviation video, we're all trading the market and until next time, happy trading.